More declined logos today. My name is André Leroux. Let's begin. We start with a Phoenix Flame logo. I think it is very promising. I love the way you did the wings. Really nice. Uh, the way you found a middle ground between feathers and flames. Excellent. A few problems. The first one is the broken neck. You know when you pick up a dead bird, well, maybe you don't, but that's what it looks like, their head hanging limp like that. The company mascot should preferably be alive. The next issue is that this is a wide phoenix. It's perhaps not politically correct these days for me to say that it is too fat, but in the real world where people buy logos, I think you will have more success with a more athletic phoenix. Then also I think this tiny flame here doesn't quite work and the gradient is not ideal. I would recommend one color or stronger gradients or gaps between the gradients. Next logo, a uh, bullseye logo. There is an older logo, this one. It's one of my own logos that I created in 2011 and sold on Logo Ground. I'm really flattered that so many people like this logo and find inspiration in it. Finding inspiration in an existing logo is fine, but you have to come up with something that is also clearly different. Um, you have a letter E in your version, but the rest is far too similar. I don't consider it plagiarism, uh, so no hard feelings, but it is thin ice. You don't want to go there. When we ban someone from Logo Ground, we delete all of their logos, and they can never sell on Logo Ground again, ever. Don't take that risk. My recommendation is find inspiration in art, or in architecture, or in nature, or in science or mathematics, not in existing logos. Learn from existing logos, but don't base your logo on an existing logo. Next, a plant logo. You call it an abstract rose, but it's not abstract, and not really a rose. Uh, you'll have to come up with a better title. For the logo itself, I think there are several problems. Uh, it feels off balance, like it's going to fall over. That's usually bad in logo design. The company who will use this logo wants to show reliability and stability. A logo that looks like it's going to fall over doesn't help with that. It doesn't have to have a strong flat base. It's okay if it floats in the air, for example. But this one looks like it's trying to stand and about to fail. Also, the red here is a bit too isolated and the typography isn't great. It feels cramped. It needs more breathing room, like that. Much better. Next up, a sleeping fox. I like it. Um, it is a little unclear in this area. Is that a pointy nose on top of the tail or is that the tail going over the nose? I think it's the tail going over the nose and that kind of works but it has to be more obvious. You could simply extend the top line of the tail a bit. Very small detail here. Uh, maybe the eyes need a bit more TLC. And then the stars. So many stars lately, stars all over the place. We like stars, but they have to have some kind of function or contribute to your design in some way. It is becoming something of a gimmick to sprinkle stars over everything. If it doesn't have a function, it is noise. Next, a paint home logo. Not a great title, but I'll call it that because I don't know what else to call it. I don't know what it is. Um, this is a paintbrush handle, I get that. I don't know what this is. It's not a house because there's a window down here. So this negative space here looks like it is the house. So this thing is above the roof. Uh, maybe you can see what it is, I can't. I thought rainbow, maybe a letter A, maybe a part of another wall. And this archway is a window, but then why is there another window down here? You get the idea, I'm guessing. I don't know what I'm looking at. That is almost always a bad thing in logo design. Whatever you draw, it has to be immediately obvious to everyone what it is. 
Next, a very good idea, not well executed. You may see only mountains, but if you look closely, you will see three wolves. I did not see the wolves until I saw the title and then went back and looked for the wolves. The problem is that without the wolves, this logo fails. If it's just a mountain, then it is a weird, unattractive mountain. You need those wolves and you need them to be more recognizable. The oval frame and this path or river here are quite bad, I'm afraid. I don't think you need either of them. I would delete both. You have a good idea with the mountain and the wolf combination. Work on that. Make a beautiful mountain, then turn one of the peaks into a very obvious wolf. You can do three wolves as well, but I think one will work just as well as three or better. Next logo. It is quite confusing. It is a letter F inside an arrowhead. So these represent the strings or sinews that attach the head of the arrow to the shaft. It's not bad, but it is extremely inconsistent. This line here becomes thicker towards the tip, so does this one. That's fine, but then this line has a constant width, uh, this one too, and these two are different sizes. This one is the same size as that one, then it becomes thinner here, then a thin line. For the cherry on top, you add these cords that are a different color, different size, and rounded corners. It's like you had 10 ideas for how to do this logo, and instead of picking one, you did all 10 in one logo. I think what you need to do is grab a pencil and paper and sketch this idea 10 different ways, then pick a winner. Next, a dog mafia logo. Some problems here. It's a dog, okay, I guess it's more a dog than a cat, but it kind of has a Napster vibe as well. Mafia, no. You cannot just add a hat and call it a mafia dog. Or at least it must look like a mafia hat. If you want the classic movie mobster look fine, then get the hat right. I also want to talk about the anagraph 3D effect. You call it a glitch effect in your description. That's not what it is. It's a 3D effect where you need 3D glasses to view it in 3D. Doing this in logos was a bit of a fad a while back. It can work, but it has to make sense for the particular logo. In this case, it feels very much like a gimmick. Just add it on, not contributing meaningfully to the logo. Next, an excellent idea. Headphones on the skull, the headphones double as the eyes and the cord of the headphones doubles as the teeth. Very clever. The only thing that really doesn't work is this plug here. The drawing work is fine, a little sloppy perhaps, but easy to fix. The problem is the placement. The whole design is sleek and tidy and I think this breaks the sleekness and tidiness. I'm not sure what the solution is, to be honest. Um, at first I thought you could move it out of the skull over here, but that messes up the symmetry. Maybe it's okay to mess up the symmetry a bit, or alternatively, a smaller one here. To be clear, these are suggestions. Uh, you don't have to go that route, obviously. Uh, if you can find a different solution, go for it. I hope you keep working on this one. Everything else in this design is very successful. Next, a letter N tech logo. It is quite generic, probably not unique enough to work as a logo. The description also doesn't help. Sometimes in the description we find some explanation that helps us to see good qualities in the logo. So we do check descriptions. Uh, this description is an example of what not to do. You say it is a letter N, techno logo, uppercase letters N and USB plug are combined to form a monogram that is modern, creative, stylish, dynamic, unique and simple. I don't see a USB plug. I even googled it to see if there's some kind of new USB connector that I don't know about. Um, and then this sentence. This brand shows commitment, uh, 
commitment that wants to continue to grow and innovate as well as fast feedback. What? It's very bad English and completely irrelevant. Even if the logo could be approved, it would be declined because of that sentence. In your descriptions, just describe the logo. If you do anything else, your declined logo pain is self-inflicted. And that is all of them for today. More logos next time. Be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.